Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with the world champion in Clash Royale, seeing that the Archer Queen is extremely broken. Mohammed Light just tweeted out that number one, two, and four player in the world were all running the same deck. Mohammed Light and Pedro are destroying the best players in the world by spamming queens. Whenever you drop that one elixir ability, you have to try to not find value. The ability eats all of your enemies alive while keeping your queen safe from any counterplay. Or you're constantly bombarding your opponent with miners plus goblins and mortars, they're not going to be at that much elixir. So you'll often find opportunities that the archer queen can make your opponent's elixir bank tank all the way to zero. The best players in the world are all running this because, in their words, it's extremely broken. If you don't have archer queen, you can use musketeer instead. Let's test it out for ourselves, climb up some ranks, and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using creator code sir tag to support the channel. Alright, so starting off the game strong, we're going to go for an ice spirit because it only costs one elixir and it's really really hard to get punished for that. I'm immediately going to go for a queen because I don't want to take too much damage from the goblins, and I'm going to counter push with a minor. A lot of times that they'll go in for a princess, but if you go in for a minor and a precarious placement, sometimes the princess will die to the minor, but then you'll activate king tower too, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go in for the queen ability just to be able to kill the, the dark goblin and then also the princess, and oh my gosh, we could have killed everything. That was ridiculous. Are you joking right now? I feel a little bit bad for our homie because we just rattled his entire defense, destroyed a prince, dark goblin, princess. Was that 11 elixir or something? That was wild. All right, I'm going to go in for goblins on defense against the goblin barrel because we know he's going to do that. And then I should be able to shut that down with the knight protecting the mortar as well. What the heck is this value, guys? The queen is mean and that defense was absolutely pristine. Making sure that we could keep that knight on top of whatever he was going to do made it very difficult for our opponent to get any value. Also, we're able to go in for the goblins afterwards, so when he wastes his log, then the goblins are still going to stay alive and force out a princess. I'm going to miner here, and I'm going to expect the ice spirit to tank for the miner so we can get even more damage. He's going to go for goblin gang. I'm able to poison on that, and oh my gosh, dude. If you guys hate log bait, this might be the deck for you, because I think this guy's already roasted and toasted. Best thing is, we know that he's going to have to apply aggression with the prince, and he's going to have to drop a lot of elixir here. So I want to go mortar, so then if he defends anything with the, the princess, then it would get splashed onto and also, you know, you have to spam enemies still, and the defensive mortar is going to give us value. So I'm ready for him to go for, like, a dark goblin or something, and then it's going to die. Oh, my goodness. He's going to go in for a goblin barrel in the back, which isn't actually going to die there, but the dark goblin does. I can ice spirit to pull the prince a little bit further, giving us a little bit more time for the goblins to get in front, and that prince is absolutely devastated. Yeah, so I'm going to take the tower right now. He's going to go goblin gang. We're going to preemptively poison because we know he has to drop it. Or, oh my gosh, he still did it after seeing the poison. Because he knew that if he didn't, the tower was dead. And I think the tower still might be dead. But yeah, the game's over. 20 HP on the tower and there's nothing he can do. Yeah, so it looks like our homie never had a chance for offense. And we did more damage on the second tower than he even did on our first one. So if you guys hate log bait and you play this deck, you're in for a ton of fun. The one queen power took his entire tower. Hey, we got a game against Bam. Well, we're ready to Bam you and bridge spam you like a madman. So wham, bam, I bridge spam with the Archer Queen at the river. I just had to do it, guys. I wanted to say it. So it kind of uh, made me do the play that I'm doing right now. If I can Archer Queen ability and it deletes like six worth of elixir, that'd be ridiculous, right? It ate all the zappies alive. And now with the Barbarian Barrel out of cycle, I think we can barrel on through with our Goblins and Miner push. He's going to have to go for a Fly Machine, but it targets onto the Miner instead. Oh my gosh, he had the Fireball. That's awesome. That actually makes me extremely happy. The one bad thing about this matchup is this guy is definitely going to end up having Rail Hogs, Rail Recruits, and we don't have Valkyrie. So the one huge downside of this deck is you do not have splash damage. So playing into Royal Hogs, you got to play aggressive in single elixir. You got to get a lot of damage. That's what we're going to be planning on doing right now. He's going to go Goblin Cage. It does redirect after killing the Goblin Cage. It's going to go and lock onto the tower unless he goes in for a Golden Knight. So we'll see if he decides to do that. If he does go for the Golden Knight, I think I got to go for a Knight here to body block. Kind of crappy to do, but it is all that we have. So we're going to roll with it. I'm going to go in for Goblins as well, since we're able to go and pull everything, especially after you use the Barbarian Barrel. And then I want to go for Archer Queen as well, just to keep the uh, aggression going through. The Goblin's going to die. Maybe I can get another Miner down. No, it didn't tank for the second Goblin. Well, it's still going to be tanking for the Queen, so that's good. And the Queen killed all the Zappies, and then the Miner's still going to be tanking for everything. And then he has to go in for the Fly Machine from a distance that's definitely going to die as well. Yeah, so for 5 Elixir, that amount of value, forcing out the Fly Machine... Finishing off Zappies, making your opponent petrified at every twist and turn. Kind of twists the elixir trades in your favor every time. 
going to Ice Spirit here because he's probably going to go in for a Golden Knight. I want to freeze it really far away. And I want to have it I'll have a little bit more distance than last time where the Knight is really far away. So when he goes Golden Knight, he's not able to dash on everything. Okay. Also, the other thing I like about this is we can Archer Queen in the middle. And if he clicks the Golden Knight ability, it bounces back over the river. Yeah, like it doesn't, it doesn't actually stay on my side. It like gives us a hug and then it runs away. It goes back on a plane flight, long distance relationship with the Archer Queen. Okay, so... I guess we can go Archer Queen again because he has to go in for Royal Recruits this time because he finally has enough Elixir. We're going to log here. I'm going to Poison. I'm going to go in for Goblins. And I'm going to Ice Spirit. This is really risky. I think I should have Ice Spirited first, maybe get him to use a spell and then roll with what we have after. But the Poison is going to come down and give us a ton of value. So it's not the end of the world. You guys can see it's a scuffed counter. We still take 700 damage, but it's a pretty good answer every time. Yo, look at that knight. He is a chivalrous sir, taking the damage like a sponge. We call him SpongeBob. His name is actually Bob, you know, and... Uh, the second part is kind of like self-explanatory. I don't need to explain my terrible joke, okay? <laughs> We're gonna go in through the Archer Queen here and we'll see what he decides to do. If he fireballs and misses the Queen, oh, yep, he's not gonna miss his tower, it's dead. He'll never remember that thing. He's just gonna go on to the next game and say, I hate Archer Queen. That's what he's gonna have tattooed on himself right now. <laughs> GG, well played and peace out. It was a pleasure taking your towers and your trophies. I think we gotta change the Archer Queen's voice line to wham bam, I bridge spam. All right, so getting into the game, we went for Knight in the back, and we already see Golden Knight. So this guy's evolved. He's like, dude, Jake, Knight isn't good enough for me. I got to run the champion instead. And he's got Lightning, so it is 1 million percent going to be an Electro Giant deck. So I'm going to go for an Ice Spirit here. Hopefully, we can go in conveniently pull everything. I don't know how well this is going to work. I guess I got to go in for a Goblins. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. The fact that I had to sacrifice Goblins so then the Golden Knight wouldn't lock onto my tower just did not feel right. But I knew he was going to click the ability because if he, you know, drops his bomber up there, it prevents me from dropping any cheap bait card. And he wouldn't expect me to sacrifice goblins, making the prediction that he would go in for the Golden Knight ability. He wouldn't expect me to just go and destroy my two elixir for no good reason. But yeah, I had a reason. I knew you were going to do that. All right. I want to go in for a mortar aggressively because he probably has Electro Giant. I want to get it out of cycle and single elixir so then maybe I can get damage on his tower. The best way of defending against Electro Giant when you've got goblins is freezing the Electro Giant so the reflection doesn't matter. So if the reflection doesn't matter, then your goblins can put in a lot of work. I also need to go in for an Archer Queen a little bit further up so then he can't lightning on everything the way he wants. He might go in for a Tornado here. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm just going to click the Archer Queen ability so then hopefully everything just gets shredded. It's nice that that thing stays alive because if the Archer Queen's able to get another ability, then he's definitely screwed. So we're going to go for a log here to try to keep our Archer Queen alive a little bit longer. Please, 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 please. I'm spamming the ability right now. I am spamming the ability like my life depends on it and it does work out. Let's go. If there was any question that Archer Queen was fair and balanced, you guys got to throw that out the window because this man's ready to throw hands. He dropped a log and he dropped a Golden Knight and the Golden Knight ability and it still wasn't enough to kill a one elixir ability. I clicked the ability on defense. I clicked it on offense and it's just so unfair. I don't know why Clash Royale seems to not care. I'm going to go in for the play that I was talking about before. This is definitely difficult to do, but it is the right decision. So we're going to go in for the Ice Spirit. We're going to go in for Goblins. And I think that's able to kill everything. He might go and click a Log and then the ability. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. I thought he was going to try to Log to kill the Goblins and then dash with the ability straight towards the tower. And it didn't work out. So now he's going to Lightning really aggressively. So we're going to go in for a Mortar. The tower is able to finish it off. Let's go! We knew it! I knew he was going to try to make a prediction in the easy, usual spot. And he didn't get it. He missed it. That's awesome. We're in his head rent free. And you know what's even better? A free Phoenix. We can go Goblins and pull that to the other side. So if you guys hate Electro Giant, this might be the deck for you. It's really good to play. It's the only thing that's bad about it is when you're playing Mortar and then your opponent is able to go in for a Lightning on top of your Archer Queen because they end up having Electro Giant. That's the only downside of this matchup. I'm able to go in for a Miner in the back and force him to Tornado, but then if he Tornadoes, he doesn't have much Elixir, so it's hard for him to ever get a good trade here. We're able to go in for the Archer Queen, force out the Lightning most likely, and if he doesn't Lightning, I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to try to not Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to damage down your stuff lightning fast, my dude. I guess you're going to get lightning in some way. So he doesn't even get damage with the E-Giant. I can go in for a poison on the Golden Knight that he's going to have to drop. Dude, why did you go in for a bomber? Oh, I guess he's just, he's, he's cool with it. You know, he knows what we're going to do. Wait, what if I go in for a mortar and a log and I kill that and then make sure that you get too close and then the mortar locks onto the tower and then we miner shot and we win the game that way. How does that make you feel, bro? Your stuff is too close and there's not enough room for you to zoom back. 
GG, well played, and peace out. It's awesome destroying Electro Giant. On defense, the Mortar doesn't even shoot the Electro Giant, so the Electro Giant reflection damage does absolutely nothing. So as long as you drop your Archer Queens up high and then your Mortar's in the middle, far enough away that they can't lightning both things at once, your defenses will be rock solid. Or just keep up the offense like I did in this game, never giving them a chance to successfully Electro Giant. Hey, let's get it, the Weeping Cherry. Well, we're gonna sweep the floor with you and make you weep even harder. That's the great thing about this deck, is like you just have fast and furious gameplay we're gonna go in for ooh, wow archer queen that's uh the, the card that we don't want to see because archer queen actually counters us you know we're the one supposed to use the queen and this guy's stealing our strategy it's not like we stole it off of mohammed light or anything you know the best player in clash Royale. you're not allowed to steal what we steal bro all right so we see archer queen it's able to always shut down our mortar the bad thing about it is if we go and distract the Archer Queen, he just goes invisible and shreds whatever distraction we have. And the Mortar is a four elixir investment. He only drops five, so it's just, it's bad all around. Wait, this gotta be Giant Graveyard, so I'm not gonna poison. When you see Archer Queen, Minion, Skeleton Army, one million percent Giant Graveyard. So the game plan that we have right now is the Ice Spirit to distract the Dark Prince, get a Knight in front of it, not click our Archer Queen ability. If we don't need to, please. Okay, yeah, I definitely need to. I need to shred this down so the Dark Prince doesn't shoot me. And then I might be able to go for a log. I don't know if it's worth it. I think it is. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be ready for this. So I'm going to miner here. And I'm going to hopefully hit the Archer Queen and a Skeleton Army if I'm super lucky. Or pave a pathway. So he Yes, let's go. We hit the Skeleton Army. Now I don't have to respond to it. I was going to say pave a pathway so he can't Skeleton Army for an extended period of time. But, you know, that's awesome. We got a great trade there. So nice to be able to clip the Queen and then also kill the Skeletons. He's going to go for a Giant. So now he has to go in for a spell to finish it off. Whenever you're playing against a graveyard deck, here's a tip. You go in for the Archer Queen in the back, and then you can poison on the graveyard and also poison on their tower and double elixir because a three-card card cycle. You can only cycle three cards and not cycle multiple Archer Queens on the map, so it lets you cycle back to poison faster because the Archer Queen is essentially a dead card in your deck since it doesn't allow you to cycle multiple of them. I'm not going to click the Queen ability until I absolutely need to, until the minions are right upon my doorstep. And then I can poison Log to kill his Archer Queen. And he's going to be like, wait, what? Why are you doing this? How are you doing this? But in reality, I don't care if you go in for a graveyard because I'm easily able to kill it since I'm already back to poison. Look at that. Doesn't that feel unfair? Look at this right now. Three card card cycle, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we love to play this game the way we do. And the poison's even able to clip the skeleton army that's going on offense at me. Get at me, bro. This is awesome. If you guys end up hating Giant Graveyard, this might also be the deck for you for good reason. It's just easy to win. He's going to go Archer Queen at the river, most likely. I think he has to. We're in a minor here. Wait, Archer Queen, don't cross the river. Don't cross the river. Don't cross the river. It's fine if you cross the river, but I don't want you to, you know? You feel me, Archer Queen? Okay. We're going to go in for a defensive mortar because it's able to splash onto the Queen and the Giant at the same time. What is he going to do? Is he going to go in for a graveyard right into a poison? Is that his strategy? Is that his bold play? Oh, man. I love it. I eat this up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're in a log because he's going to have to go in for like another skeleton army or use the Dark Prince. And we're able to blast back the Dark Prince so it doesn't even get a charge. And we knock away its shield. And then I can Ice Spirit here on top of the Dark Prince as well. And then I can go and click the ability so he's not able to get any damage. He's going to go and target the wrong thing. We're going to poison on the minions and then go goblins on defense. If you guys don't go goblins on defense, you're really missing out because you only spend two elixir. And it's... It's just way cheaper and nicer and more efficient. I'm going to Ice Spirit here. I might be able to get back to another Archer Queen if I'm Super Omega Ultra Lucky. Oh, he almost let me have it. That was so close. I was also spamming the ability, and then I almost clicked a poison in the corner of the map where the ability bar is. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. It's not a good vibe. I highly recommend you guys just be a little bit wary of that happening. So we're going to go for a log again to finish off the queen, and then also maybe end up hitting a Dark Prince and a Skeleton Army again. I'm going to go for a queen in the back. I'm never going to go for a poison when I don't have the queen in my hand. If you don't have the queen in the back because they can't kill the queen, always cycle the queen in the back and don't get frivolous with your poisons. If you overcommit with a poison, then your opponent might be able to punish you, and that's just not the way that you want to play Clash Royale. Or maybe you do. Maybe you like losing to Giant Graveyard, but I'm not one of those people. So I'm going to go for a mortar here just to make sure that we're able to distract the minions and then hopefully get some tower shots as well. And if not, then it's fine. I'm going to Ice Spirit here so then we can distract the rest of the minions. Go in for another Knight. He's probably going to have to Arrows or Snowball on this. Ooh, no. That's really, really bad for me, actually. Wait, this game is looking a little bit more dicey than I wanted to be. I might have to poison and log. No, nah, I'm going to poison here, actually. I'm going to Ice Spirit. And then I think we're fine against the minions. We'll have to wait and see if the Ice Spirit jumps on the minions. Of course it does. Ice Spirit, you're a good boy. You're a good dog. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to go for a very aggressive mortar here. And then he's going to have to go in for, like, a Skeleton Army again. So I'm probably going to go use a log again. <laughs> Yo, I just feel this man on the spiritual level. I know what he's going to do. I'm reading him like a book, and his towers are going to cook. 
So I'm going to poison here. I'm going to go in for an ability. I'm going to minor. And I'm going to go in for goblins and just play so aggressive because he doesn't have elixir to defend this. It's like literally physically impossible for him to stop this archer queen. It's just going to take his tower right now. He has no elixir. He has to defend the minor, but then the archer queen is just going to kill everything. And then we win the game. So as you guys can see, this deck is absolutely overpowered. Even against other archer queen decks with giant graveyard, it's just no match. You steal everything. They don't even get the chance to play the game, literally. Every time they go for a graveyard, it gets countered by poison and goblins. Meanwhile, you have a ton of fun with predictions, constantly placing miners all over their tower. And in the end, the dude fulfilled his prophecy. He was weeping like a cherry with his emotes. Wait, this guy finished 180 in the world looking at the banner, so he is going to be a top tier player. Definitely want to go in for a knight if he ever goes in for a lava hound looking at the banner again. He had lava hound as his, one of his highest mastery cards. So we'll see what he's going to do. I can mortar aggressively and protect it with my knight if I need to. Maybe I can go in for goblins if he goes in for anything that we want to distract. Yeah, please get goblins down. Yes. Look at that. We had those fast reflexes out here, and that's going to earn us a couple mortar shots. If not, like three, right? That's awesome. And then we can go and conveniently kite back the Inferno Dragon using a knight. So then the knight is going to pull everything back, and it won't die to the Inferno Dragon. And then I think that the Inferno Dragon stays onto the knight, and we can use the queen afterward. Awesome. Such a stellar start for us. And it hasn't even, like, begun yet. The fun hasn't begun. Playing against Lava Hound can be problematic in some situations, but the Archer Queen won't die. And then he's going to have to drop something on top of it because Archer Queen doesn't cross the river. So what I want to do is I want to click the Queen ability when he drops something. And then I can go in for, like, a Miner here. And then hopefully have the Phoenix target onto that and then Goblins maybe. And then, oh, no, it died. That's a little bit unfortunate. We are able to poison. I think that is able to fully shut everything down, especially if we can Ice Spear on top of the Balloon. Let's freaking go. That was incredible. The balloon only gets one shot. The phoenix will die. It's going to pop near us. And then, obviously, I don't think that the egg is going to respawn. So we're in an okay spot against a top 200 player that is a preference of running Lava Hound. So this is going to be a tough matchup because I only have Archer Queen as an anti-air avenue of defending, right? If you only have one way of defending Lava Hound and big pushes with phoenixes and miners and Inferno Dragons, it's just not a great matchup. We're going to go in for goblins after he decides the arrow, so that's very nice for us as well. And I think he's going to have, like, another Phoenix on top of us. So what I plan on doing is I'm not just going to go for the Archer Queen. I'm going to go Minor last second. I'm going to have the Archer Queen take the initial shot. And then he's going to go in for a Phoenix. Okay, no, no, he's going to go Barbarians. I need to go in for the ability. I didn't get it down fast enough. Dang, that is brutal. It just didn't have enough HP, you know? It didn't have enough gas in the tank. Okay, so I might tank this game if he goes in for a Balloon right now because I didn't have enough Elixir for the Mortar. But fortunately, he decides to go in for a Lava Hound instead. So if I go Goblins here, I think that that could be okay because he's probably going to go in for a Phoenix. And I want to be able to guarantee that we take Tower, and that will take Tower. He needs to respond more than that. And he doesn't have arrows back, so that's going to take it, and that's going to put us in a pretty good position. I'm going to go for an aggressive Mortar here because it is able to pull, and it also should pull the Lava Hound as well. So it pulls everything. Maybe I can cycle back to another one if I go in for a Poison here, and I Miner on, or I catch the Miner with a Knight. Oh, no, I'm definitely going to lose this Tower. I really shouldn't have tried to defend it. Actually, I did need to, because if I didn't, I would have gotten 3 crowned, right? He would have 3-crowned me 100% if I didn't try to defend that. So I think it was the right play overall. I just wasn't able to make it happen. I'm going to go for Goblins here. He's probably going to go in for Barbarians. I need the Inferno Dragon to die, so I'm going to go for an Ice Spirit and make sure that the Inferno Dragon doesn't ruin me if he like went for a Miner and a Zap and I got 3-crowned. That would have been just absolutely tragic. You guys got to let me know down below in the comment section if that's ever happened to you. Let like an Inferno Dragon just lock and load and then it just takes your entire tower. And you're like, wait, what happened here? I thought I was fine. Happens to me way too often. All right, we're going to go in for this. We, wow, he's made a very good play with the Prediction Inferno Dragon. He's just going to straight up bypass everything. I guess I need to go in for a Poison here on defense and then hopefully get back to a Mortar so I can pull back everything. Yeah, I'm not going to go in for the Mortar. I'm just going to go for a Knight because that's the only way of stopping the Inferno Dragon. The Mortar would get shredded in seconds. I'm going to get Goblins down. He might go in for Arrows, which would be very bad for me. The Barbarians, fortunately, aren't doing too much damage. Maybe I can Archer Queen in the middle. Honestly, it's not that bad. I'm going to go for an Archer Queen here. I was considering Archer Queen in the middle, but then I wouldn't be able to go in for a Mortar aggressively. He can't Inferno Dragon because Archer Queen is just able to kill it, so he has to go in for more than just that. I'm going to go and click the ability because I didn't know if he's going to go and drop something else on top of it. I just wanted to make sure that we would force out more Elixir. I'm going to immediately Poison. We're expecting him to go in for Barbarians, so I don't want to go in for the Goblins too soon. I was just kind of waiting to see what he's going to do. All right, we're going to go in for Goblins now just to make sure that everything's going to be delayed so the Inferno Dragon doesn't get close to us. The Goblins lock onto the tower. That's massive value. I can go in for another Miner, Archer Queen. He can't go in for a Balloon. He's going to go in for a Phoenix. We're able to pull it back, actually. That's really, really good. I'm going to use the ability very early on just to do a lot of damage here. And then I'm going to go in for a Knight to go and pull the Inferno Dragon again. Then I'm going to go in for a Poison. I'm going to go Goblins. He's probably going to arrow this, but it's fine. I can go in for an Ice Spear on top of the Phoenix and then pull back the Balloon with the Mortar. 
This is exactly what we needed. If we're able to make sure that the Archer Queen stays alive, the Mortar locks onto the tower, we go in for a pre-poison on the Barbarians, and that should be enough for us to win if we just cycle back to one more minor poison. This will be it. We just beat a top 200 Lava Hound player. That's what I'm talking about, baby. And all we had was Archer Queen on defense. That's sometimes all you need. If you go in for Archer Queens and you spam them and you make them spam more stuff into your poisons and all of your value from the one elixir ability, you just get juicy positive elixir trades to the point that they can't hope of breaking through you. And we actually pushed up quite a bit. We're going to be ending the day at 9,000 in the world. Like, subscribe for more daily videos and have an incredible rest of your day.